The Heat's backcourt could be overhauled this summer, and the upcoming NBA draft might be the best way to do it. Is there a guard that could fix Miami's offense? We look at some of the top names at the draft, Devin Carter, Jared McCain, and more, and see how they could be a part of the Heat's future on today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Heat, your everyday podcast on the Miami Heat, whether you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day, Monday to Friday. I'm Wes Goldberg, editor at allyoucanheat.com, here with David Ramil, both of us credentialed Heat media members. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. If you're watching us on YouTube, help us on our road to 14,000 subscribers. Hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you're watching us. We're beginning or we're, we're continuing along, rather, with our Blue Notebook NBA Draft Prep Series on at least one episode every week. Between now and the draft at the end of June, we'll be diving into scouting reports on a bunch of prospects that we're going to organize by major questions and themes. Today, we're talking about some guards in the Heat's range that can help fix their offensive issues. Let's jump in. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking 10 blue notebooks with me to Malibu with my wife. Blue notebooks. Blue notebooks. Blue notebooks. Blue notebooks. 10 blue notebooks from Malibu. Blue notebooks. Blue notebooks. Blue notebooks. 10 blue notebooks from Malibu. My life. Let's jump in, David. We'll start with Devin Carter, the son of one Anthony Carter, guard from Providence, six foot three, six foot nine wingspan, 200 pounds, 22 years old, one of the risers after the Chicago draft combine. What do you like about him? I think he's just a heat guy. If you look at everything that they say about him and the uh, the intangibles all align with heat culture. Like he's a guy who understands how to make winning plays. And that's the the common refrain when describing his his performance at the collegiate level is that he just does whatever's necessary. Whether it's a steal, he's defensive minded, he's tough, he's learned how to improve over the course of his career. And the fact that he's been in NBA locker rooms, he was asked about it during the NBA combine. And he just, he knows the NBA mentality. He knows what it takes. A lot of guys have such a hard time adjusting, especially nowadays when you're younger and younger and you don't come in. We saw this last year with Jaime. He's a guy who was like, you know what? He's not phased by the star level attention because he was a star at UCLA, but he was there for four years and he matured over that time. With Devin, it's the same thing. I think he has that kind of, mental approach to say i'm ready for this i've been kind of born for this and in, in a way that you know a lot a lot of people can say it kind of gives me shades of jalen brunson in terms of that you know what i've been around the nba locker room like rick brunson wasn't a great player he just happened to play for the new york knicks but you you have something there when you're the son of an nba player that has kind of grown up around the game and understanding and the maturity it doesn't always translate but something about Carter's game kind of reminds me of that in the sense that he knows what it takes to play at a high level. And I think there's a willingness to do whatever it takes. And he's a Miami guy. And so, yeah. you know, he is literally a Miami guy having played in the city of Doral, not too far from where Miami plays. So I, I think it's just, you know, it's such a natural fit in terms of the on court. Like he's a shooter. He's a good defender. He's a willing passer. There's a lot there that he does very well. And again, just the intangibles and in tying all together it seems like he would be a natural fit for Miami. You mentioned you use the word willingness, and I think that's almost underselling the way that this guy plays basketball. There's an eagerness to it. There's an earnestness to it. Defensively, it when you watch him play, you look you put on the tape on, it looks like he can't wait to get the offensive possessions over because he wants to go back and play defense. He is so excited to play defense. Head got on the dog in him. Always looking, got a dog on him. He's just and it's not just I want to get steals and I want to get jump into these passing lanes and I want to get blocks. And he does all those things. He's yep. just really excited to disrupt what the opposing offense is going to do. 
He's great at getting over screens, fighting through those screens. He gets skinny. He uses his arms well in terms of not drawing those defensive fouls, but getting over those screens, pushing guys out of the way. He's really strong. Um, he's at 200 pounds already, 6'3", six, 6'9", six wingspan. Uses every bit of that body and does not get moved out of the post easily, even against bigger players who are trying to get him in the post. I really like what he does defensively. He might be the best perimeter defender among the guard group in this draft. Yeah. And it's because of the strength. It's because it's because he's able to read the game. You're absolutely right. This guy looks like he's just been around NBA level basketball and he plays NBA level defense already. It's already there. And that makes he's a 2020, he's a 22 year old prospect on the older side, the way that Jaime Hakas Jr. was as polished as Jaime was offensively coming out of UCLA. Like Devin Carter is as polished defensively. Yeah. Uh, there, he was also, he also had one of the best vertical leap at the combine and 42. was an A plus on all the other, you know, athletic categories. Like yep. he was, so the athleticism is there, even if the size isn't, that helps him get blocked shots out of record, the perimeter. Set a record like in a shuttle run, like a combine record. Like, so the quickness is there, even yes. if it doesn't just necessarily pop out. He's absolutely a great athlete. So I'm glad you pointed that out. The offensive stuff is a little hit or miss. Now we can mm -hmm. kind of get into the stuff maybe that we don't like. You mentioned he's right. a little bit of a shooter. 38% on low volume of threes. Wonky shot. A little yes. bit Tyrese Halliburton-like um, yeah. where it's, it's, a, it's a long windup and it gets like a weird release. And sometimes it looks like it comes off the side of his fingers, side of his hand. But yeah. it, go, it went in more time. It went in at 30% at a 38% clip last year. But that was almost an anomaly when you look at the rest of his career. Uh, he shot... 75% from the free throw line, which is not great and is not necessarily an indicator of an elite shooter. So I'm a right. little iffy on that, but the ball is in his hands a lot. And I don't think that that helped. I think he'll be a better off the cat shooter when he doesn't have to be off the dribble as much. Um, and he didn't get a chance to cut a lot off ball and stuff, but you yep. just look at the way he plays. He's going to be a good cutter. I'm pretty confident in saying that, even though he didn't have an opportunity to do that a whole lot at Providence. Um, and he's good in transition. He gets out on the break. He plays with his head down. He gets, uh, and, and he plays hard. There's some footwork under the basket that I like, but, um, you know, it, it, it's a little bit of a hard read because he's, he's such a primary ball guy at Providence yeah. where he's going to be a third or a fourth offensive weapon at the NBA level, which I think he's better suited for. Right. And at Providence, one of the things I saw in the scouting reports on him was that, you know, he was really carrying that team to a way that most collegiate players aren't, especially at, at their early stages of lottery. They're probably on teams where it's a number of lottery picks or high-level recruits and things of that sort. That wasn't the case. It was the Carter show, basically, in Providence. And and so he was kind of the focus of a lot of defenders, and yet he still thrived there And during his time. I saw a lot of good off-ball screens and things like that, a lot of a nice uh, – Coming around screens too with a ball yeah. in his hands and being he's able a good to screen up. setter. I'm glad you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he's got he's got some nice things that definitely will translate at the NBA level. The shot looks ugly, but you know what? Who cares? Like I I I, I thought about it. and I was like, you know, I was like, I I seen or from what they say, he's been improving steadily over the course of his collegiate career, and he's put in the work and everything else like that. I think the hitch isn't completely gone, but you know what? as long as he's able to continue to make him consistently at the NBA level. And he was taking some from deep range during his collegiate career. Yeah. I think it won't be as big a problem. So, it, it, you know, it doesn't I'm with look you funky. on that. I wish yeah. I wish the production was a little bit more consistent. But to your point, it's it an, did not improve. Not enough of a sample size, right? It did improve, and, and he'll be used differently at the NBA level. There's there's another guy that we're going to talk about who's, I think, shot. His, his three-point shot is completely broken. I don't think that's yeah. the, the case with Devin Carter. I don't think it's a broken shot. I just think it's weird. And that's okay. Yeah. Sometimes that's okay. Uh, in terms of his comps, I like Bruce Brown as a comp for this guy. I like yes. Lou Dort quite a bit as a comp for him. Um, There's a good one here that I like too. Derek White. That that, that might would be, be that would be best case scenario. Yeah, but it's also it's also this fully realized version of White. Like I'm I'm sure somehow Celtics fans will find a way to poke at me for saying this, but like Derek White wasn't Derek White until he got to Boston and played with other star level players. Or actually, I'm sorry, not other. Do you star think Devin Carter? Do you think Devin Carter could run high a pick and roll on a on a on a championship contending team? Because that's what Derek White is doing right now. He's running pick and roll with Tatum yeah, and Horford Derek and Porzingis. White I don't know that Devin in year Carter seven. Oh, so. Yeah. Oh, so you think like Eight? early Devin, you think like early Derek White is more Devin Carter. I that's don't know that where Devin, he is. Okay. That's is where Devin Carter is now. Like, I think mm. he's, 
at the same level White was when he came out of Colorado as a guy. I mean, they drafted him and he was basically a backup to DeJounte Murray and Tony Parker. Like they didn't need him in San Antonio. And they took him. He was like, yeah, yeah we like his potential. They wound up, you know, being a pretty gritty player, et cetera. So Carter's, you know, he, he's involved. He's, an, he's he's an okay passer. He sees what's in front of him. Maybe there's room to grow there. Maybe with that athleticism, you can kind of jump over the top and, and see a some guy with a six nine like reach that can jump forty two yeah. inches and block shots and, and isn't going to be bullied off the low post. Like again, that's why I say when when you're looking at a guy that the Heat would probably love, it's him because he just mm-hmm. the defense, the mentality, the yeah. understanding, all the little things that the Heat loves so much. There's two guys in this draft who feel like Heat culture guys mm-hmm. that like when you put them in a room with the heat front office folks, they're going to be like, we really like talking to this guy. Devin Carter is one of them. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about the rest of our prospects, including USC's Isaiah Collier. Pretty polarizing prospect. I wonder where we're going to land on this. We'll talk about that next here on Lockdown Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. Go Cats. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Make sure to go visit FanDuel.com, America's number one sportsbook. We'll be right back. Thanks again for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. So we're going to talk about Isaiah Collier, Jared McCain, Jacoby Walter, and Carlton Carrington coming up here. Let's start with Collier, the USC Mm. guard. At one time, looked like he might be the number one pick in this draft. And Mm. struggled a little bit at the start of his freshman year at USC. Missed Missed a month because of a hand injury. Came back, looked a little bit better after that. Guys built like a running back. Here's this is these are the things I like. Built like a running back. Shifty, yep. gets downhill fast. Not a super explosive first step, but a pretty good one. Yep. But plays with pace, kind of downshifts and upshifts, and gets to the rim basically whenever he wants. Dude lives in the paint. Those are the things I yeah. like about him. What about you? No, same. Uh, you know, good finisher, always pushing. Like I, I saw that he plays. At his own pace, I'm, I'm, you know, he can play quick. Yeah, he can play up tempo. At the same time, he's always pushing the ball, but he can slow it down and just find ways to penetrate. So I think that skill could translate to the NBA level, and just the fact that he attacks the rim, something that Miami has needed so desperately. At least before the acquisition of Terry Rozier, they were just looking for somebody to put pressure on the rim. I think Collier can certainly do that at the NBA level. He's just a big, burly body and willing to constantly attack, attack, attack. Reminds me a little, and please, people don't take this the wrong way. Like, Uh-oh. he's like 20% of Luka Doncic. Luka is like the entire package, but just in the way that Luka isn't the best athlete, but is strong right. and has a wide frame and finds weird angles and is shifty and just like always finds a way to get to the paint. Collier yeah. does that. He doesn't do anything else like Luka Doncic, but he at least does that a little bit, a small percentage of the way that Luka does it. Um, the things I don't like about him, the shot's broken. I hinted at it before. There's one guy whose three point shot is broken. It's Isaiah Collier. Like the shot looks awful. I hate it. It doesn't look good. The free throw percentage is terrible. Uh, 67% from the line. I I don't know what it is. There were, there have been flashes, I guess, in his, in like in IYBL and and stuff in high school, where maybe he was a little bit of a better three point shooter. I'm not seeing it. It does, and it wasn't even great. It was just like marginally better in terms of percentages. It's not good. Defensively, lazy, disappointing, zero effort. Does not close out. Always up in his stance. Like, just come on. Like a guy with the with with, with this physical profile, he should be a lot better defensively. And if you're a team taking Collier, you're betting on. Okay, maybe the 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 whole coaching situation at USC wasn't great. The team was kind of lousy all the way around. They weren't playing for a whole lot. Maybe right. with us, with our coaching, with our, you know, our our culture, whether it's the Heat or another team, if you're drafting him, maybe you feel like you can coax a little bit more energy out of him defensively because he should yeah. be better than what he was. He's not, he's not he's not a first round pick. He's not a top fifteen guy certainly. And as good as he is and what he does best. Again, NBA defenses and everything else, that'll change. Like, he's not going to be on the floor. 
because of all of his other weaknesses, he's not going to have the opportunity to show off his strengths. And so to me, I see him as a really long-term project. I think that he's going to be one of these guys who in a couple of years could be on the fringes of being out in the NBA unless he has that, damn, I've got to go ahead and put in the work moment and completely rebuild his game, which isn't to say he's not capable of that. But right now he's so young and he's such a raw prospect. And I just don't see that he can make an immediate impact on this heat, especially because of what I had said it before with Terry Rozier on the roster. I don't think you need a guy like Collier, what he does bring. He's off my draft board. That's fair. Even without Rozier, if you told me Rozier's not on the team next year, I don't care. There's other <laughs> guys I can like get. Into, there's other. There's other guys that get into the paint. He's just not the right fit. He could be on other player, other teams' draft board. But if I'm the Miami Heat, he's not on my draft board. I'm not even taking. Right, but let's move uh, on. Then. Jared McCain from Duke, six foot three guard with a six foot three wingspan, two hundred pounds, twenty years old. Uh, scored fourteen points a game on forty one percent three point shooting on a big volume, six attempts per game, five rebounds, yep. almost two assists. Best shooter in the draft from three one point them, range. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of them. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I like. Awesome pull up shooter. Great balance. The shot looks great compared to guys like yeah. Carter and Collier. Um, sure. In transition, he's got that stop pop can slow down. The guy's going to be a pull up threat at the three point at, at the NBA level. I think that's an immediate skill that translates over. Absolutely. Uh, smart guy. I think his, uh, yes. at the combine, he actually measured at six two. Um, but it was like so six, it was two, a little point point seven five or something like that. Yeah, was it? I thought it was just six. Three. I gave either him, way, I gave was... him with, with with shoes. I rounded up to six three. Oh, yeah. and, you know, he's he's gonna be able to fit in because I think again, as heady as he is, as smart as he is, understanding. You know, he was at a high level program at Duke. He could shoot so well. Like, there's gonna be an opportunity for him, but he's gonna be targeted. And I think there's just there's as much as Miami might need that guy who's a three point shooter. Like you're going to give up a lot defensively, what he can provide offensively, and so I wonder how much he'll be able to actually garner some time at the NBA level right away. He's a, another prospect or a guy who might be a really fill as needed basis. You know, like a, the comp most often is Seth Curry, a guy who's also undersized but can shoot the lights out. And you see, you know, a guy like Curry, as good as he is when he's available and he's had problems with health, obviously. Like he's, you know, a sieve defensively, and that's a problem because he just cannot defend at a high level. Yeah. And you McCain, wonder whether or not McCain. McCain at least tries hard defensively. Sure. He's stronger than than he looks. Like he doesn't really get pushed off of his spots, at least not in the film that I was watching. He 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 plays hard, he fights over screens. Like there's at things college. that I like at college, but I, I think yeah, I was reading somewhere to... that I, the the strength measurements and stuff like that were pretty good at the combine. So, okay. but look, but he's small. He's small. He's gonna, to your, he's going to get targeted, and he's not going to be able to switch onto anybody uh, that's bigger. It, it, but he does try hard defensively, and he's one of the other guys. When I talked about Devin Carter, the the front office guys are going to fall in love with his interview. They're going to fall in love with Jared McCain's interview too. This guy is heat culture stuff through and through. It looks good. You mentioned the Seth Curry comp. I saw the same comp. That's a pretty good NBA career. And it sounds like a lot of the guys in this draft are sort of like, hey, long term, like Maybe, role players uh, who can land, who would be in the NBA yeah. for a decade. And, and I can see a little Peyton Pritchard too in his game, you know? Something like that. Um, yeah. The guy Not a starter, just... good bench player. That's it. And yeah. I don't know. Is that worth taking it 15? I'm not so sure. Uh, let's do one more before we go to break here. Um, Jacoby Walter. Let's do Jacoby Walter. Sure. What do you like about him? I like a lot. I, I really do. Like, I, I know that there are weaknesses in his game, but in terms of uh, a, a developmental project, he's got the size. He's got, again, the opposite of all we're talking about in terms of the offense. Like, his shot is fluid. He's got, he's just rangy. He's really young, he's just 18, you know? And we're talking about these kids that are so, so damn young. And, and so, like you're you're looking down the road, I think he could be a high level impact player, a guy who can really shoot. He's athletic. Um, he's got nice touch. Like he's got an array of different offensive skills. Defensively, he's a work in progress. He's 18. Like I mean, it, there hasn't been a lot of time yeah. for him to really develop these things. And if you're looking what he could be five, six years down the road, I think he could be a really good player. I like the comp on him, Chris Middleton too. Like a guy who you know was polished maybe this was a not necessarily a good one but in terms of like what he brings to the table he's not like a pop off the screen type of athlete neither is middleton but damn if that guy doesn't just keep going and going and going and finding ways to beat you 
And so if you're looking at a guy like Walter who could provide that kind of eventual upside, it's a nice pick. But again, we're just talking about whether or not you want to risk a 15th pick on somebody like that, knowing that you're going to be investing years in what he can do. I don't know if it's well, worth it. He's 19. He's going to be 20 by the time the season starts. Oh, I thought he was. Just, I thought he was just 18. That's okay. Uh, 19, 20 when the the when the season starts. Six foot five with a six foot ten wingspan. To talk about the the size that you were mentioning earlier, he's an okay athlete. He was like a C minus on all the combine draft stuff, but he's got a real smooth handle, great shooting stroke. He's got escapability with the dribble. He's good off the ball too when he was allowed to play off the ball. Um, there was definitely, he's an accurate passer, right? He throws a good lob. He was with a guy that we scouted who I really liked in, in our center uh, portion of this, Eve Missy. He's just, it was Walter Missy pick and roll all, all season at Baylor. And so yeah. he got a lot of practice in that. He's not making advanced reads, but he didn't have to in that kind of pick and roll offense. He's not much of a drive and kick guy. Like he doesn't get to the basket a whole lot to pass. He will get to the basket and score. But most of those assists, most of his passes to Missy and his teammates were basically perimeter based. So I'd like to see a little bit more advanced stuff. But to your point, the guy's young. He's six foot five. He does at least have the size to see over the defense and get those passes out of the trees. And defensively, I actually liked what I saw. He competes hard. He's got a good motor. He uses his long long arms to get interceptions and kind of poke the ball away and stuff like that. There's definitely an upside here. I saw the Chris Middleton comp. I didn't love yep. it. I don't love it. Uh, I actually, it, it's a, it's okay. It's an okay comp. I'm not, I, I struggled with this one too. Maybe like a smaller, like a smaller Herb Jones, smaller Trey Murphy Ooh. type could be where he is with a six foot 10 wingspan. I wish, I just wish he was a little bit, if this guy was six foot seven with a seven foot wingspan, I think he'd be yeah. a no brainer lottery pick in this draft, probably a top 10 pick in this draft. I wish that as good as the three point shot looks, I wish the percentages were better. He shot 34% on more than six three-point attempts per game. The free throw shooting wasn't great. I just wish the I wish the production was a little bit better, but I like what I saw on film. The eye test is good. The tape is good. Um, I, I like Jacoby Walter, maybe more than uh most people kind of in this most other prospects in this range. All right, we've got one more prospect to talk about, then we'll talk and then we'll decide which one is the best fit for the Miami Heat at the 15th pick next here on Locked On Heat. Thanks again for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. All right, before we decide which one of these guys is the best fit for the Heat at 15, we got one more blue notebook. Carlton Bud Carrington. What do you like about him? He's a good scorer, um, good offensive player, good shooter. Put up really monster numbers at the combine in terms of his shooting. Um, and he's young also. He's uh, another guy who projects as a, a potential kind of score that's the role that everybody kind of envisions him although you, you, you know, in his interview he said that he sees himself as an underrated defender that a guy that i think a lot of teams don't really expect him to be able to provide that uh, defense but that he's going to continue to work at that and that, he, that he's uh shown the ability to defend at a higher level i'm not sure if that's necessarily the case he compared himself to devin booker and uh, Dejounte Murray, so that's a, an odd combination there. But uh, you know what? If he had, if he has the defensive mind to set of one, and the offensive ability of the other, that would be a hell of a player. I just don't know at this point in time whether or not he'll actually reach those high levels. One thing I meant, I forgot to mention about Jacoby Walter. He compared himself to Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> love that, love that energy yeah, for love, you, Jacoby. That's great. Um, that's great. In terms of Bud Carrington, um, six foot four with a six foot eight wingspan, one hundred and ninety five pounds, wet. I'll add. Uh, I don't know. He's he's a mid-range guy, and it looks good. Never gets to the basket. I'm not sure that he knows that he's allowed to get three feet within the... <laughs> Over-reliant like on the jumper, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and that's fine, but absolutely zero rim, protection, uh, rim pressure. You know what? Miami already has a guy like that on this roster. He's had some several guys like that on the <laughs> yeah. roster. Um, 32% from three point range. So inconsistent as a shooter from there, you know, it doesn't look good. Um, I'm just going to be honest. If, if he says he's a great, a better defender than he showed, then I guess I'd have to believe him. Cause he didn't show it on tape gets overpowered. 
nothing really pops off the tape defensively for him. This guy's off my board. He's he's six man potential, and what the for six man team. has, yeah, for another team because we've already got our six man on Miami's roster. So you know, he, he's uh he's he's that kind of guy with, yep. with the the role the six man has evolved into as being your spark off the bench offensively, and you're okay with him giving up a, a ton of points defensively. I think he fits the bill. So we've talked now about Devin Carter, Isaiah Collier, Jared McCain, Jacoby Walter, and Carlton Carrington. We were gonna. Those are the guards that we're talking about. There's going to be other perimeter-based guys, wings that we'll talk about in another episode. But in terms of sort of on-the-ball guards, this is kind of the group that's in this sort of area, at least for now in the mock drafts, where the Heat might be picking at number 15. So of this group, to go back to our original question, Miami was 21st in offensive rating last season. Which one of these guys can best help fix their offensive issues? I don't think any of them can. Um, mm. If anything, you like McCain's skill set if it's able to translate at the NBA level in terms of his being, you know, a, a direct skill three point shooting, and he could kind of help run that second, you know, that second offense a little bit and the second team off the bench. But I don't, I don't know that that's going to fix anything to a huge degree it'll be a nice spark to have something that they were missing yeah, last I guess, year especially. i guess we should re no rookie is fixing miami's issues to the level that they need him fixed but i guess which one especially is the best 15, to help right. address those issues right and so yeah like collier on paper in terms of the drive and kick stuff like the heat still need that rosier or no rosier they still need guys that get the basket and do all those things i just don't i, I i'm out I'm out on them, right. you know, at least for now. Maybe maybe if the Heat ultimately pick them at 15, I'll delete this episode Talk and yourself. into it. But for right now, I'm not seeing it. And so right. I, I like McCain as a guy. You can never have enough shooting. You know, you already lost Max Struess. Who knows what's going to happen with Tyler Hero this this offseason? You never know. He's always he's in rumors every summer. Just <laughs> because you have Duncan Robinson on the on the team doesn't mean you're good. For now. Not in today's NBA. Like, you need more. And, like, to your point. Yes for now right and and this team is always trying to groom three-point shooting I kind of like McCain as a bench score for this mm -hmm. team I think of this whole group though and now I'm going off I'm going off the path here Devin Carter to me is the one that makes the most sense and excites me the most out of this whole group yeah. group I like Jacoby Walter fine if they want if they go ahead and get him that's a little bit of an upside play and and I could talk yeah. myself into it that's okay I think he could I think there's things that he could do at the NBA level for sure and I like the yeah. length and I like some of the upside there but if you're if you're gonna sell me on Devin Carter, that to me is the, gonna be the easiest sell. I think offensively, he could still contribute in some of the ways yeah. that Kyle Lowry was doing when he was really trying in terms of setting screens and being an off ball guy and doing all the the smart. I'm not saying that Devin Carter is gonna have the basketball IQ of Kyle Lowry from day one, but in terms of doing those little things that I think the Heat appreciate, I like that. And defensively, he's a guy who makes a lot of sense for a team that I think still has some scalability defensively. I think what if I'm Miami. I'm also trying to improve my defense next year from the fifth rated defense last year. I want to be top two in the, in the NBA next year. And yeah. how often did we talk about Miami's lack of point of attack defense? And I don't think that you could just be like, well, we got DeLon right off the buyout market problem solved. No, no, no. Yeah. Go get a young guy like Devin Carter. And I think that goes a long way in addressing that issue. Yeah. I, I just also, I, I'm trying to even picture, even as we're talking about it, like there's no chance they would start. I mean, not even assuming that Tyler is benched or whatever, like who knows what his future could be. I just don't see him starting. And I just don't see him like the defensive tenacity. It's a great the idea of like, you know what, have that guy kind of throw him out there, be a disruptor on defense. Mm -hmm. But at this point, if you're going to invest a 15th pick on him, and as much as I, I love the idea, I love the story. And again, similarly to you, if, if somehow they wind up selecting him, happily delete this or, or you know walk it back whatever but i just don't see that you can invest a 15th pick it's not like the 15th is a lotto pick or anything like that or even like a top five pick but you still want to hit on somebody that you think is going to be able to make it and have an impact whether it's immediately and i think in miami's case it's probably immediately or in the long term i don't know i don't know if you can afford to invest in a, a pick like this on a guy like carter who might not get a chance to play much because honestly you know you've got You've got Darrell right, and you do address a lot of those needs. And and maybe he can maybe you can groom Carter so that he could be a long term impactful player. But I just don't know that it's going to be somebody that you can draft right away. I, I'd rather I'd rather they look elsewhere to shore up whatever weaknesses they have on this roster. To your point, right now the Heat have five guards that figure to probably 
compete at the very least for rotation minutes. It's Terry Rozier, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, Josh Richardson, who's probably going to opt in, I would imagine, and, yeah. and DeLon Wright. So does Devin Carter crack the rotation above those guys? At the same time, do the Heat think that maybe they're going to not have all those guys mm. by the time Devin Carter is competing in training camp for a job, right? So that if, if they were to take somebody at the guard position, it might telegraph something. I guess the other version of this, too, is if the Heat do end up trading Tyler Hero or Terry Rozier or, or Duncan Robinson even or one of these guys for help somewhere else, because you and I agree, like the spots that this team needs is elsewhere, right? They need right. help on the perimeter with Caleb Martin and Haywood Highsmith probably leaving. They could use a backup center. Maybe they can use a starting center or another front court guy. Who knows? Maybe you're able to trade one of those guys and address that need as opposed to trying to address that need at the 15th pick. And then do one of these guys, do you think, and I'll just kind of give you a new question here at the end, do any of these guys speak to you as maybe a replacement for a guy you could be sending out, whether it's Terry Rozier, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, any of these guys? I mean, similarly, I, I think Walter and his offensive ability is more fluid. McCain, similarly, his shooting yeah. ability. You know, and, and I think Carter, he just hits on so many intangibles. You, you kind of almost feel like you have to take a guy like that, especially given heat culture and everything else like that. They would love to have a guy like that. If this was another draft, you know, and a different roster composition, maybe they would just say, you know what, he's been our guy. He just fits exactly what we're looking for. And he's family. Like, I mean, he's already practiced and played a, on this Miami whole practice court. So he's familiar with all this. So I just, I don't know. I don't know that they'd want to go that route this time around. Yeah, I think if they did take a guard at this spot, it would telegraph something because the draft is at yeah. the end of June. Free agency doesn't start till July 1st after the draft. But if they were to take a guard here, it might telegraph something in terms of what they're planning over the summer. That's and, a good point. Um, it's something to keep an eye on. If they take Devin Carter, I'd be fine. Yes. I, I really I like I, I would love talking to this guy. I would be like, hey, this guy's defensive. And you know me, I have like a, a weird attraction to guys who are have this particular skill set. I think point guards who can guard their position at an elite level and just and switch and guard other positions potentially is one of the most unique skill sets in the NBA. And I think a lot of teams are trying to find that when they don't have it. And yeah. having a guy like Carter would help. I think Jared McCain would be good insurance for just additional shooting for this roster. I think that makes a lot of sense. And then Jacoby Walter is sort of the upside guy. Are you with me, Isaiah Collier, Carlton Carrington, just sort of off your board at this point? Yeah, I, yeah, Collier less so, but even still, like the fact that his one best skill is I can run with the ball and I can attack the paint, which is absolutely great, and maybe that can translate. I just need, need to see something beyond all that. I don't know that Miami wants to, again, take a chance with him. You could probably find somebody similarly skilled or could contribute just as well in the second round, which is something to consider. Or on a minimum contract in free agency. Fair enough. Thanks for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on your podcast app.